So I have no desire to be here right now, working out in my garage. I slept horribly last night, couldn't go back to sleep. Finally went back to sleep. And like 30 minutes later, my alarm woke me up to work out right now. And that's honestly been the biggest battle since having a kid is, as you parents know, there are periods of time where your toddler just doesn't sleep very well, or your infant doesn't sleep at all, or they need to be, or they need to eat at like 2 a.m. And so your sleep schedule gets really messed up. And so that entire time you're fighting to get sleep. And it's the only thing that really matters. Everything else goes to the wayside, including what you eat and don't even think about a workout plan. But I've been using that excuse for too long and I'm starting to try to convince myself that working out, be it in not the greatest circumstances, meaning that I didn't get great sleep last night, is still something that I want to build as a routine. So here I am. All right, let's do some bench press. So one of the biggest mistakes I see people make in the gym, specifically with bench press, is that when they're lowering the weight, they come down way too fast or they're bam or they're bouncing it off their chest. And the problem with that is, is you actually build just as much muscle controlling the weight down to your chest as you do pushing it out. So you're literally wasting valuable muscle building by just letting it fall. When you're working out between sets, I definitely recommend getting a dog that you can pet because it's very relaxing and they love it. Everybody wins. So I've talked about rest breaks in the past, but I didn't do a great job of explaining it a little bit more thoroughly. So it completely depends on the type of workout you're doing. If you're doing a strength training workout, namely hypertrophy type style, I usually recommend 60 to 90 seconds at the most. If you're doing like powerlifting, like absolutely pure strength, three to five minutes can be how long you rest. And if you're doing like a HIIT workout or something that's more endurance based, you can have rest as little as 15 to 30 seconds. So it depends entirely on the type of workout that you're doing. I love being a dad. I love being a husband, but I also like solitude. I always have. And I think I've learned to appreciate solitude a lot more having less of it. And that's not a complaint. Like I'm grateful for not being an absolutely lonely piece of shit. But now I understand why my dad would read and chill on the toilet for like 10 minutes because it was the only time that he had. So I totally get it now. Good, Thomas. How are you doing, man? Something else that I see a lot of beginners do wrong with bench press is they're not aware of where their elbows are. So when you're doing a bench press, what I typically see is when the weight goes down, the elbows go out like this. What you actually want to do is you want your elbows to slightly track in towards your rib cage. They don't need to touch and they don't need to get right to the rib cage, but you want the motion to come down and towards your body, not away. If you can fix that, you're going to fix what 95% of people get wrong. Oh no, I forgot to start my watch to track my workout. It basically doesn't count now. All right, well, at least half of it will count. Over the weekend, I watched this movie called Bone Tomahawk. If you haven't seen it, it's basically like a horror movie slash Western. Great storyline, great storytelling, absolutely nightmarish reality for those people. Like, I still can't go outside at night without thinking about being attacked by one of those cannibals. It's the number one reason why I don't watch horror movies. Fart. So a common mistake I see a lot of people make when they're doing barbell bent over rows or pretty much any kind of bent over rows, but specifically with barbells, is one, they don't bend over far enough. And two, when they pull, they pull up towards their chest. Now, there's nothing wrong with targeting the muscles up towards your neck, but the problem is, is you can get a little too much tension in your neck. So think about pulling right towards your belly button. So you get all the muscles between your shoulder blades up to your shoulders. Also, whoever says that weightlifting isn't cardio, I don't think they've lifted heavy enough. Cause like, I know I'm out of shape, but I'm very much out of breath. And I know it's in intervals and it's short duration, but it still works your heart muscles. It still works all the same muscles that running does or sprinting does. In fact, sprinting and weightlifting are actually very similar. You're a baby doggy. I'm just a baby dog. I'm just a little golden baby. You smell like wet paws. You ever notice that like dogs' paws smell like Fritos? Isn't that weird? Is it just me that thinks that or am I not alone on this? Why do you smell like Fritos? Why do you smell like Fritos? Are Fritos made from wet dog smell? Probably. Who knows what our food is made of these days, right? So I know it doesn't sound like much, but my goal last week was to work out once for that entire week. I did it. This week, my goal is twice. Today is Monday. I want to work out again on Wednesday, and that is my goal. If there's one thing I learned as a trainer that's been the most valuable lesson, it's that don't be afraid to set really, really small goals, especially in the beginning, because in the beginning, succeeding is more important than trying to make the thing that you're trying to succeed at this huge like Mount Everest achievement. The very smallest achievements build the best momentum. And then once you can conquer the smallest stuff, then you just add more small stuff. That's why last week 
my goal was one workout. This week, my goal is two workouts. And depending on how that goes, next week, my goal will be three workouts. And then from there, my goal is going to be maintaining three workouts a week, consecutive weeks in a row. So gold building, I would say, is actually the most important thing. Because before you can be successful, you have to be okay with small wins consistently, not losing 30 pounds in a week. It's not realistic. It's not feasible. And it almost always leads to failure that demoralizes you and makes you want to quit. And a lot of times you will quit. So I want to formally apologize to all my clients that I ever told to just stick with it and grind despite having lots of life events get thrown at you. Because when that happened to me, I didn't do any of that. I didn't push through. I just said, you know what? I can't work out right now. I can't care about my nutrition right now. I have to just focus on raising this kid and trying to sleep any time of the day that I can. So if you were ever a client of mine and I seemed like I was being a little harsh, it's because I didn't have perspective. And I probably should have at least anticipated that I don't know what it's like to be a parent, but I was ignorant in thinking that it wasn't that much different than not being a parent. And it's a completely different lifestyle. Like before my daughter was born, I really had this idea that no matter what, you could achieve your fitness goals. And now I have so much more empathy for parents who have given up while they have kids and wait until their kids are a little bit more self-sustaining to be able to achieve their health goals again. So anyway, formal apology. I am sorry. I hope you can forgive me. I was just an idiot. I'm still an idiot, but I'm an idiot with a little bit more perspective. Also, this is not a sponsorship, but this Ember Cup that keeps your drink warm for an hour or so is the best gift I've ever gotten. There's nothing like having a warm drink that doesn't get cold because it's constantly being reheated. They're expensive, but if you drink coffee every day and you enjoy it, it's not just something that keeps you alive, I recommend this mug. So a question I used to get from my clients fairly often was, why do we sit down for some exercises and not for others? So anytime you're sitting down, let's just say we're doing a shoulder press. When you sit down, you take out the core stability portion of the exercise. So when I'm standing up like this, I'm having to constantly flex my core muscles, whether I realize it or not, to help keep me stable when I'm doing the lift. When I sit down, I eliminate that, and now I'm just focusing on the shoulders. Both exercises can be important and have their own uses. So at the end of your workout, if you're super fatigued and your form gets compromised because your core is just exhausted, sitting down can eliminate that and allow you to focus on just the muscle group that you're targeting. But if you're trying to go for a full body workout experience and it's not gonna compromise your form, standing up is actually better for a functional movement because it's working your core. I 100% did not wanna wake up this morning. Like I remember my alarm going off and opening my eyes and thinking, nope, I'm going back to sleep. But despite that, I got up, got my clothes on, I came out here, and I worked out. And now I 100% am glad that I did. I feel better, not just because I am achieving something or because I push past that initial, I don't wanna do it thought process, but because it feels good to move my body. And it's really difficult sometimes to toss up sacrificing sleep and sacrificing a workout, but sometimes it's just not gonna make sense and you have to go with the thing that maybe isn't most ideal. Because yes, sleep is extremely important. In fact, I would put it up there with one of the most important things for your health, if not the most important thing. But at the same time, I've been putting off my workouts for two years because I've been prioritizing whatever amount of sleep that I can get having a toddler. So at some point, it might not make the most sense, but you have to sacrifice something. And I think that's one of the reasons why lots of people don't exercise is because there is sacrifice involved and they're trying to do everything. When in reality, when you do one thing, you always sacrifice another whether that's sleep, whether that's time relaxing, whether that's a hobby that you'd rather be doing than working out. At some point, if you don't make time for your health, for your fitness, for your nutrition, you're gonna have to make time for sickness because it's gonna catch up with you. And if you don't believe me, just know that the current system, the current food system we have, the current lifestyle that we live, all leads us to the same place, which is poor health. It's designed that way. I know that seems crazy and maybe even a conspiracy theory, but when you look at the food system that we have, there is no path other than disease unless you take control of what you eat, how you move, how you think. You have to be in control of it and you have to go an alternate route if you want to be healthy. If you just rely on the food system to take care of you, you will end up prematurely in some form of health care, with some form of disease, with some form of ailment that you have to pay money for 
to keep you alive, whether it's a medication or if it's anything. If you don't take control of it, you will end up like everyone that you hear about who has diabetes, who has high blood pressure, who has all of these things. Now, I'm not saying that everyone has control over these things. Sometimes it's genetic, don't get me wrong, but you can still fight to make the ailment less severe. And that's the most important thing. One perspective that's really motivated me as I get back into a fit, one mindset that's really motivated me as I work towards getting in better shape is that I now have more excuses than I've ever had, and I'm still working towards achieving something. And that makes me feel really good because there's that many more reasons why I couldn't do it, that I would have a valid reason for not doing it. But despite all that, I'm still doing it. It's kind of like if you have all the odds stacked against you, like if you're a sports team and you're the underdog and you win anyway, that feels really good. Because it proves to everyone else, and I'm not saying this is why I do it, but it just proves that you have resilience when things aren't ideal, aren't optimal, aren't working in your favor, and you still find a way to make it happen because achieving it is something that you're going to benefit from months and years and probably decades. Whereas whatever comfort you were in when you were choosing not to do it, or maybe the situation wasn't ideal, only lasts for that moment. So yeah, that's a big motivator right now. One of the biggest lessons I learned from lifting weights is the harder you make your life in an environment that you can control, the more resilient you'll be to the stress in the world that is out of your control. It doesn't mean you'll completely avoid it. It just means you'll have tougher armor when those situations come. So when you can control a difficult life, and I'm going to use exercise because lifting weights, exercising, sacrificing everything else to do those things is hard, but you have control over it. By making the things in your life that you control difficult, like lifting weights, you better prepare yourself for the things that you can't control stressing you out. That's a wrap.